a little messy here, but anyway, the, the way we operate is, is fairly simple. This is our intern table. Um, we have typically like a lot of interaction with materials, with samples, actual finishes of all sorts, like, you know, like we get like all these like fabrics and, you know, a lot, well, a lot of stuff that you guys play with a lot. So essentially we have a giant collection of finishes, of wood floorings, of stones and stuff like that. But they, the reason we keep them around is just pretty much because they eventually they become part of the design process. Doesn't mean that we're gonna use any of this specifically, but it's during design process, it's good to start bringing out textures and colors and ideas and say, hey, well, this is kind of what I have in mind, you know, like. Hi, my name is Jose Antonio Gonzalez. I'm an architect from Central Mexico, Puebla, and I'm the CEO and director of like Jaeger Architecture here in Los Angeles. Then we get pre, like, you know, we gotta get to scale eventually. So essentially we jump into this type of environment. And, you know, like we actually, I mean, as you can imagine, we sketch a million things and drawings and plans and all that stuff. But more than anything, we love doing three-dimensional exercise, like maquettes and models. And even for small residential projects, we do it because it's, I think it's actually, it's kind of responsible from our end to try to develop all possible medias to make sure that we are proposing the right thing. I do have a special connection with the arts and architecture to my parents. Like, my, both my parents are architects, my father and my mother. So I actually grew up in an architectural environment, me and my brother, drafting tables and, you know, tea, tea roller and all those things. And, uh, but I always, so I kind of always knew that I wanted to be part of the, you know, the, the arts or the design. And So we work on these two stores. Okay. And challenge number one was the building. Like, it's such a modern, contemporary approach to the building that is, we have to be really careful not to do classic -y things that don't make any sense. Like, some of the, you know, the, the owners had a few ideas. Like, oh, what if we do some arches? And was like, like no, no, come on, dude. You hired this, like, amazing architect that did this amazing building. Let's try not to mess it up. So this is it. So this is a Juliet. This is a really cool, contemporary Parisian bistro with really high-quality meals, lunch and dinner. Like this particular space is a bit more of a dinner oriented concept. I mean, it's great for lunch and it's still beautiful, but nighttime is when it gets as magical as possible, right? And that you can tell by the colors we use, the textures, it's a bit of a darkish kind of environment. So, this is actually Hall Winery in, uh, in Napa Valley. And this is one of our design sets that, you know, we develop at, at, at Gary's. And I just to give you a a clue of the... So this project was this giant uh, wooden trellis structure, three-story visitor center, that, you know, we had to detail like all the way and, you know, it, has, it had all these like entry areas, uh, covers and spaces. I was there nine years and it was like a, like a total adventure. I went to school in Texas, in Austin. I work in New York, but then I came back to Texas, graduated, and went a little local, and I actually found a job in Germany, and, and I moved to Berlin. Spent there like a year and a half working in this really fun competition, big firm. But then my brother gets into UCLA Business School. And we had a little bit of an agreement that say, well, if you get into business school, that's great. We can live together, be fun, but only if you get into New York or LA. He got into UCLA, he was like, yeah, they're good. You should come give it a try, you know? And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go interview with some fancy firms. I know Frank Gehry is there, Tom Main is there, like Richard Meyer, all these big firms. And yeah, the rest is history. But here, the fun one we did is Margot. That's the one that brought us to Platform, and it's on the rooftop, so, all right, so there you go. This is Margot. This is the, you know, the concept that I was telling you, this is a bit more of a daytime um, yeah. experience. But what's magical about this place is the terrace, like having this giant open space. Actually, the, the, the highlight of this particular uh, restaurant, from my perspective, that is not a very LA thing, is that we have the train, right? Like, it's, like you know, in the East Coast, you used to see trains everywhere. LA, we don't, people don't know about them. So here you have this brand new line of train that actually every 10 minutes just passes by. I guess, every, I mean, everybody has different hobbies and different things that kind of spark their, their creativity. I, Particularly, I am I, I'm myself like an urban explorer. Like I really enjoy the city. And Los Angeles kind of trapped me because uh, it's kind of an endless urban city that just changes. 
and grows and offers like very different environments all around. I mean, they, I think there's always been a level of connection between the arts. Just photography, design, painting, architecture, like it's there, you know, and we have like, you know, we have, we have seen a lot of really beautiful uh, magical connections between famous architects and artists and musicians and stuff happens interestingly. But I, in today's pace with technology, with social media, I think now we have the opportunity to make it a lot more integrated and a lot more exciting. And I think we can get more out of it.